Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. I believe that data and automation are one of the primary factors that are enabling the mega corporation trend. There's some great data that you can download from the American Business History Center on the largest companies by revenue. Now, I pulled one from 1917, which I'll include in the video description. U.S. Steel at the time generated the highest revenue at $1.28 billion. In 2024 inflation adjusted terms, that would come to about $31.5 billion. Today, the largest company as measured by revenue, not market cap, is Walmart, which comes to $657.33 billion. Now that means that Walmart is generating 21 times the revenue of U.S. Steel. Now that shouldn't surprise anybody. I mean, back in 1917, there was nothing but human and mechanical labor that dictated productivity. But today, we have so much enablement that we see the emergence of enormous mega corporations, some of which are conglomerates with hundreds of brands. And I would argue that data and automation are the foundations of these mega corporations and that this mega corporation trend is only going to accelerate. Now, from the outside looking in, it can seem like these mega corporations are just well oiled machines. But let me assure you that they're often a chaotic mess. See, when an organization gets to a certain size, it can be very difficult to separate noise from signal. There are large enterprise data sources, but there are also hundreds and even thousands of additional internal and external data sources. So organizing this can be a real mess and it's very difficult to get the culture to play ball. So when Zimek Dagani presented a reframe on how to organize that chaos into something called a data mesh, analysts and corporations took notice. The reframe addresses some of the cultural and organizational paradigms that have to be adopted to succeed in a high-scale data environment. The first step is to reorient data ownership to the people that are most vested in the data domain and leverage it the most. This ensures that the people that are the most passionate about the data will have the drive to enable its use. The second reframe in thinking is to get these data owners to think of their data as a product. Just like any product, the product owner must obsess about the quality of the product, the usability of the product, the awareness of the product, etc. Now, I absolutely love this mental reframe of product thinking. It's a very powerful way of thinking about your data. Organizations that use this reframe effectively and build the correct incentives around it have a chance of succeeding in their data mesh frameworks. Now, the other reframe is that we want product managers to incorporate self-service data acquisition into their data products. So the presumption being that users can consume the data at scale without massive bureaucratic hurdles. And these hurdles are really common in large enterprises. The interoperability of data immediately becomes a critical component when you adopt the data mesh reframe in thinking. So having standards that product managers can follow becomes really important. This is where a standards body in the form of a governance team defines security policies, access controls, documentation policies, aggregation conformity, and interoperability standards, and so on. Now, this is a really a critical piece to the puzzle and often a tricky part of the data mesh. See, we're decentralizing ownership of the data to get away from big centralized IT structures. But don't forget that IT is centralized for a very specific reason. At the end of the day, stakeholders can't sign off on 10 variations of the same balance sheet. It has to be one balance sheet, which is also the case for the rest of the corporate analytics. Now, I have a follow-up video that speaks to some of the skeletons that can emerge in data mesh frameworks. Additionally, I'll include a white paper that describes the tooling Ness uses often to stitch the data mesh together. Also, if you're a mega corp that is on this journey, I recommend reaching out to Nest to talk with a specialist. And I've included a link for that as well.